Today, healer Ningguang lives. We are going to try to get her ascended again, level up her weapon, and ideally, the talents as well. <gasps> oh, that's not bad. I never opened up the boxes that we got from the Spiral Abyss in the last episode. You know, healing bonus for healer Ningguang could work. Okay, it didn't roll the best, and I literally cannot level this up anymore. However, because it rolled into defense percent, and this is Geo only, we, well, I'm not going to put it there. We could maybe put it onto Yunjin, I guess. Also, fun fact, I just learned prototype Amber and healing bonus don't actually work together at all. Actually, I just read a bit further and it seems like there's a bit of debate as to whether the prototype Amber actually does scale with the different artifacts. Because some websites say, no, it doesn't. And then other ones say, yes, it does. So I guess we're going to have to do some myth busting later to see for ourselves. So we shall uh, grab these drops. And since Navia is already pretty low in health, let's just use the burst here. And then we'll see how much we heal up when it's done proccing. It looks like it brought us up to 5,969. So on Navia right now, that was 2,188 points of healing. Let's just charge that burst back up. And now we use the burst again and we'll see how much our... Oh, wait. I forgot that I was supposed to swap the healing bonus before I did that. It's fine. Let's just go get our burst back again. Theoretically, it should work completely unleveled, but just so we can see maybe a little more of a difference, I will level this up to three. So maybe we'll have a 10% increase to the healing. Starting at 8,984 HP, let's use the burst, switch back, and we'll see how much... I guess I could just look at the ticks for healing because that would probably tell me. But I'm instead finding the difference between my now healed HP and the unhealed HP. However, I am happy to tell you that it does indeed change it. We went from a 2,188 healed to 2,407, which means the first couple of things I read on Google were wrong. And that's why you should never trust what you read online. So honestly, Four Piece Made in Beloved would probably be the best for that. So let's go ahead and take out the Geo hypostasis two more times then we can head back to see if any of the glaze lilies have managed to respawn yet and it looks like we are in luck i know the ones over in the village haven't respawned yet because i got those a day after i got these but at least we can get a couple more that will allow us to come in and ascend ningguang again now i did see someone commenting that i shouldn't max their level immediately it th didn't really matter too much because i was already going to ascend them pretty quick but for here i won't completely max the level because it might be a day or two before I'm able to ascend her again. I think the thing that'll really hold us back are the glaze lilies. Let's just do a little more crafting and we'll bring her burst up to level six. So tomorrow is prototype amber farming day and then the day after that is the talents and at some point I'm gonna need to somehow get more mora. But that's a problem for future java. I am now future java which means it is now my problem. So without wasting any time let's get started with the farming. That should hopefully allow us to upgrade this weapon at least two times, which it does indeed. Oh, we're at a Mora. How does this keep happening? Well, speaking of Mora, I saw some comments saying that there's a firework gadget. Yes, there is. That we can buy with some of our Mora. Let's just buy this one and then we'll smelt that in here and we'll make it uh this color for geo and we put it in and we can launch it and what the comments were saying that i saw was that this can apply pyro to the pot in the gorge so we are gonna go try that out now let me be clear i don't think this is gonna work but the people in the comments claim that they tested it and it does work if this is a solution then why have i never seen anyone else do it for challenges like this that's why i'm a bit hesitant and if it doesn't work what'll really suck is i just dumped forty thousand more into it and yes i know that's really not that much but right now it is quite a bit also to the people saying that if i wait until the next region when they might have a pyro thing to use in puzzles in the overworld that's still not gonna work because if i get too far from this pot it resets the quest and i have to talk to paimon again so tell teleporting to the other side of the map to grab a little thing in the overworld and then teleporting back means I'd have to reset, which means we'd make no progress. So I'm just going to put in this. Let's see. That was what I was expecting, but let's just try it in a couple different places. I don't think I can get it right underneath. 
I'm just gonna make this thing go crazy. All right, let's see what that does for us. Look at it go. It's, um, it's not really any pyro application going on but if nothing else it looks pretty can i shove it right next to the pot okay that is that's pretty close let's just yep do that and would you look at that there's no pyro application taking place even if i get hit by the firework i don't get set on fire so i don't see how the pot would someone else asked if they tested it and it's true or if they're just making it up and then someone else replied saying it is tested and true this is looking kind of not tested or true to me i mean i don't know what to tell you maybe this was just an elaborate scheme to get me to play with fireworks for about an hour because if so it is working flawlessly also coincidentally the person who said that this was a tested and true method seems to have deleted their comment. It'd be cool if this worked, but uh, I kinda, kinda doesn't. What about that? What if I put it under a construct? Then what happens? Nothing. We will come back to that later, I think. But I'm pretty sure, yep, that is AR-45. That means I could go start farming artifacts, except I'm not going to. What I'm really hoping it means is we can farm a higher level of the weekly bosses. Oh, and and we can ascend the world, which I'm going to do because I would very much appreciate more drops. Well, this shouldn't be too difficult. It is nice how we can pretty much have constant uptime on all of our bursts. Oh, that that's it. So at what point do I have to fight the electro hypostasis for this? Well, maybe now Hillitrails will actually drop something. Let's see. There's three of them here. First one dropped nothing. Second one dropped nothing. Third one, surely. Okay, we got one of the lowest tier drops. And there's a fourth guy as a bonus who also gives nothing. Looks like my Hilitro mask problems are not solved. We do have two acquaint fates now, though with no pity for a four star, I'm not expecting much. And we see two blues. I'm not gonna lie, it is looking very tempting to go farm here, but I will refrain from doing that. With the last of our Mora, though, we can go ahead and max out the weapon as far as we can for now, I think. Think? Yeah, level 50 is for the final ascension. I can't actually level it because obviously we need more Mora. Kind of ironic that we keep running out of Mora while trying to ascend someone who is usually obsessed with Mora. But now we just need to wait for tomorrow so that we can farm up the guides to prosperity. And Mora. D did I mention we need more Mora? Actually, before we wait for the weekly reset, I should probably do all of the reputation stuff because that does give us a lot of Mora. There's bounty. Bounty number one, bounty number two, and bounty number three. If you were paying attention, you would have seen that we already maxed out at reputation level eight from the first bounty we did, but since we can't get bounties unlocked in any other region, I figured I would just finish them here anyways. I desperately needed that Mora. So prototype Amber, level 80. And now we will wait until tomorrow so that we can farm up the talents for Ningguang. Today is a prosperous day. and that's because the philosophies of prosperity are available today. Plus, now that we are AR-45, we can farm the highest difficulty. And that hopefully won't prove to be too difficult for us. Nah, we're fine. But with this new difficulty unlocked, as long as we don't get too unlucky, we should be able to farm faster because we're getting higher tier drops. So, uh, here's the funny part. I kind of forgot that we needed to ascend her again in order to bring the talents above level 6. And obviously, I just spent all of my resin on that domain, so I can't farm the boss. Oh, but I guess it doesn't matter anyways because we're out of Mora. Am I just that bad at managing resources in this game? I don't remember what the last thing was that I recorded in this video. Yes, I could just go check the footage and easily figure out what it was, but I don't even need to because whatever I said was probably one of the most true statements I've ever said in my life. One more boss takedown and we will be able to max Ascending Wong, at least for now. Then we just have to wait for level 50. While I wait for this boss, to respawn, there's a new event we can try out. And I'm sure, you know, with Geo-only characters, this, this is gonna go great. So let's go with the prime um, uh, advanced no no advanced yep that and 
Ooh, look at all those Geo characters. So, uh, I guess that's as far as we can get in that event. Though now that we have finished up that event, we can get our final drops from this boss and then turn our attention to whatever else we need, which just took a little bit of crafting and just a tiny bit of farming. We are able to go ahead and ascend Ning Wong. Now, don't ask me who, but someone told me, you know, a little secret. They said that the next acquaint fate on this account is going to be insane. They lied. Oh, but we do get another chance. So maybe they were just confused. Perhaps they meant the second wish on the standard banner. They, they were right. Oh, they were just one off. I can't believe it. It's literally useless to us. There is only one use for ka -ching, and that is giving us another free wish. I'll be taking that, and you can just get nice and comfortable here. It's actually crazy that we're going to get back-to-back -back five stars. Okay, but it would have been really crazy if we did. We are going to completely ignore that and pretend it did not happen. So instead, let's just focus on the fact that we can fight the weekly bosses again. I'm thinking we'll fight the whale, maybe Tartaglia, which is kind of ironic because that's usually what you do at the end of the Leeway Archon quest, which we haven't been able to do yet. Why is my character running so fast right now? I eagerly await the day when I don't have to do this two times per fight. Hey, I mean, at least I got an achievement out of it. There's the whale down. It drops. It drops. Two, I'll take two. Unfortunately, I don't think that those are the correct one, and I'm not sure if we have any of the dream solvents. We do not. Next up on the hit list is gonna be the wolf. Reason being, both Ningwang and the Traveler need some of its drops, whereas for the other characters, it's just one boss per one character. So statistically, there's a much better chance of us getting something that we can actually use without needing dream solvent from this guy. This time, we're gonna get three drops and a dream solvent for fun oh well that's one drop at least we could actually use it but for our final weekly boss of this week it's gonna be senora now if i just stall for a couple seconds allowing you enough time to scroll down to the comments we should be seeing a couple comments coming in now saying something along the lines of this dude really just called the Valen senora skull emoji go ahead go ahead and do it I dare you. Ooh, this one's also only one drop. I'd almost say it's not worth farming them until we can farm at the highest difficulty, but I also want to start collecting at least a couple of their drops, especially since you can only get so many per week. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to start farming ley lines again shortly because as with all my accounts, we are running out of Mora very quickly. But since we do have some Mora right now, I figure we might as well get rid of that by dumping it all into Ning Wong's burst. Now we have a nice cool 10,000 was in Demora. Also, just a quick progress update on Ning Wang's healing. We now see it procs for 902. And that's pretty much only because I did level up the healing bonus piece a little bit more. You know, there is another way to make some Mora. Of course, with our teams looking like this, I'm not sure if we can actually get it. In all honesty, what I'm more interested in is the artifact box. I kind of like the idea of a free five-star artifact on the account. So the question is, can Navia solo one side of floor nine? Or maybe the the real question is, can this side keep up with a Navia solo? And as sad as it is, that does seem to be what we're dealing with. Navia definitely took some damage on her side, but she cleared it pretty quickly. This side can survive really well, but it's not exactly the quickest. Three stars on chamber one, though. Let's see if we can hopefully get the same on chamber two. I have a feeling we're gonna have to restart this one a couple times. Yeah, with the freezes, this is gonna suck. I think we have to do a run and gun kind of strategy here where we just we shoot and then we run away which means we are getting very little damage off and we just ran to a death this is kind of hectic i can do okay at dodging the attacks it's just a matter of not being able to do too much damage because i'm dodging the attacks oh oh this is not gonna end well okay hear me out same thing but we're gonna attempt to put Ning Wong on the first team, which means no Geo Resonance for the second team. However, we can now heal with Navia, so maybe it'll balance out, because now I can play a lot more offensive. So we are now back to Chamber 2, but I must say that that second half is struggling a lot. Again, survivability is fine, it's just the timer. And speaking of survivability, this side's still struggling. On the bright side, Ning Wong gets her burst back constantly. But would you look at that? The first half of Chamber 2 is defeated and we somehow 
got three stars on the second half as well. Though it was pretty close. We only had about 15 seconds left. Can we do the same for chamber three? I did take the card that gives us a 20% reduction to skill in burst cooldowns. So I like to imagine that we have an okay chance. That timer is ticking way too fast. First half went fantastic. Second, oh gosh. I think I already know how the second half is gonna go. All right, let's abandon the idea of three stars right now. Can we just win? Lumine, why do you have to climb your construct in the middle of a fight? See what you did, Lumine? This is why you were my least favorite Geo character. Well, that was not exactly easy or quick, but we did get that one free artifact that I wanted. Though considering that we still have not farmed a single artifact on this account, that's, I don't think that that's too bad. Let's see what we can get here. It is the right set. Attack, you know, I would prefer Geo damage, but double crit attack percent on the Geo damage set. I will happily accept that. Oh, it wants to roll defense as well. Usually, I'd be really mad about that. Though I guess on an attack main... Oh, okay, the flat HP I'm mad about. But yeah, on attack percent main stat, I guess defense percent isn't necessarily as necessary. But it's time for a quick damage test. I want to see if this geo damage goblet is better or worse than just doing attack percent goblet. So with geo damage, 21,000 on an uncharged crit. And by uncharged, I mean the skill isn't charged. Then we swap over to attack percent. Is it higher? Or is it lower? 18,000, so it is better for the geo damage. You know who could take that piece, though? A little someone named Ningguang, which I guess is fitting since we're trying to upgrade her the most anyways. Guys, I did it. I tricked hundreds of people into just watching me farm stuff on this account. And by that, of course, I mean I streamed a bunch of our just collecting materials over on Twitch. I would love to say that that means now we can make a bunch more upgrades, but we're still kind of limited by those weekly bosses. But as we are able to farm those weekly drops we should be able to craft a good number of the mob drops that we need and you know what i'll probably just continue to subject twitch chat to watching me farm the same stuff i was also going to just spend today farming ley lines since not too many domains are open that we need but since we're not max world level we don't actually get the full value out of ley lines but we can farm the highest level of domains so it just seemed like a much smarter choice to farm here also just because it does bother me a little bit i am going to start leveling up Ningguang's basic attack as well. I'm aware that I don't really need to, but there really aren't that many Geo characters, so I think ideally we would max out all of their talents. So as of now, every character that we have is level 80. All of their weapons are level 80 as well. And then other than Ningguang's normal attack, every talent is at least level six. And I guess at some point soon, we should look into maxing out the statue, or at least leveling it as far as we can. With Ning Wong now being pretty much caught up to the rest of the team and a new healer for our account, we will end off this video by going as far as we can in the new event with only Geo characters. And we, we couldn't do the first one yesterday, but today we can... Well, we can't do that one either, so we'll go to the next one and...